Good morning. Welcome to the Science of Mind class. I'm Dr. Petra, and I'm, I'm here along with Ryan and Richard. And we are, <laughs> he's, Richard is waving, but he's behind the camera, so you can't see him. And Ryan, all you ever do is hear his voice, which is fabulous. So we're continuing on in our chapter on physical perfection. We are on page 195. And um, while we're talking about healing and uh, physical healing, of course, everything that we talk about is uh, completely um, usable in any area of our life that we want to demonstrate. Um, so, so we're starting this chapter on, uh, or this little section that says, we are allowed to choose. I think this is one of the most important ideas that we have in metaphysics and in the science of mind. Not only are we allowed to choose, but we are designed as choice-making beings because we're conscious, because we are self-aware. And we're not just run by instincts. We're not just um, unconscious, or at least we hope we're not. We're waking up to being conscious to who we are, to how the universe works, to the power of our attitudes and choices, thoughts and feelings, and to the use of the law. And so the idea that we are somehow subject to suffering, that it's the will of the divine to quote unquote teach us lessons or to cause us to have experiences so that we'll learn something um, is really not, does not have any place in metaphysics or in the science of mind. What we're doing is we are constantly experiencing the outpicturing of the universal law. The universal love is the fact that we have been given our ability to understand the law and use it and left free to explore that. So we are allowed to choose. Not only are we allowed to choose, but quite frankly, we must choose because not choosing is also a choice. So I want to just, sometimes I feel like I just want to read the book to you, but you know, that's not what we're doing here. So we have the ability to choose what we will do with our lives, and we are unified with a law which automatically produces our choice, right? That's what's going on. We've been talking about that now for months as we've been exploring the metaphysical understanding of the nature of reality. It's, it, start, it goes all the way back to Plato. It goes to back to the teachings of Jesus. Um, in our new science and the quantum um, physics, we're understanding how much we impact reality. All of these things are showing us that it's true, that there's a law which automatically produces our choice. Now, what we don't have is the ability to destroy the idea of ourselves. So we can't destroy the divine pattern, but we do have the ability to deface it, to make it appear discordant. Which, what does that mean? Out of alignment with the divine image or the divine pattern or the, or the infinite pattern of what it means to be a happy, healthy, sane, whole, self-aware human being that is um, experiencing and expressing life to the fullest. So the, the critical piece here is that we are individuals. We are individuals and we do with ourselves what we choose. If that were not so, we would actually not be self-aware. We would actually not be able to discern the um, consequences of our choices. And therefore, we would not actually be able to understand that we are co-creating our life with the infinite power and presence. Individuality cannot be automatically produced. It must be uh, spontaneous. It would not be individuality without the ability to think as it chooses. So, so this, is, this cannot be stressed strongly enough. Now, I can't tell you how many times I hear people in the science of mind and in metaphysics say, well, you know, I'm just going to see what spirit wants. Well, there's only one spirit thing that spirit wants. And that is to be you and to express itself as you, as the individualized expression that you are. 
and to explore and to experience what it means to be individualized and to become self-aware and to recognize all of these creative powers, all of this possibility, and then to use it to actually create more life, more good, more joy, more love. That's the only thing spirit wants. Spirit does not care whether you're healthy or not. Spirit does not have an opinion whether you're an accountant, whether you're a teacher, Spirit does not, does not um, uh, have any opinion about whether or not you need to learn a lesson. Because the truth is, the universe only sees us as itself, as us. Which means the universe only sees us as perfect. The universe sees the divine pattern that is available to us. The question is, do we see it? Because we are now individuated from that infinite one. And it's just this weird paradox. Like you could go away and you could meditate on this for, <clears throat> well, I was, <coughs> was going to say month, but you could meditate on that for a year, which quite frankly I have. What does it mean to be an individualized expression of the universe? What does it mean to paradoxically be the universe that has decided or has intended to evolve physicality to the place where an organ could grow that would house the universe as an individual. Ernest Holmes calls this the sense of separation. This is the story of the fall from the Garden of Eden. Although it's not a fall from grace, it is a recognition that the sense of separation is required for us to have individuality and for us to have the ability to choose. If we can't choose not to follow the divine image. We can't actually consciously choose to align ourselves with good, with life. Take a tree, take a cat, take a star, take any place where there is consciousness without self-awareness. And each one of those things automatically with amazing intelligence grows and becomes what its divine pattern is. And it has no choice about that. A sequoia tree will never be a rose bush. And a, a yellow rose bush will not be a purple rose bush. Right? There's no, there, it's just the trajectory of life. We, on the other hand, or any place in the multiverse where self-awareness becomes aware of itself, that requires a paradoxical understanding that we are the universe individuated, which means that we can choose not to be in alignment with our divine image. Now, that choice is not always conscious by any means. So, so sometimes we use the word choice and we think, well, that always means a conscious choice. It does not. Sometimes it's just the going along with the, with the mentality and the consciousness of, of um, the culture or the time or the experience that we're having today um, or our past and however that's playing out, right? So it doesn't mean it's a conscious choice, but it is choosing. In physical healing or in the healing or manifesting of anything, what we seek to do is to choose to realign ourselves with the divine pattern, with the divine pattern of wholeness or abundance or joy, and recognize that that divine pattern is available to us. So I love this. We live in a universe of love as well as a universe of law. One is the complement of the other. The universe of love pulsating with feeling, with emotion, which is that desire to express and experience that impulse of life to be and to become and to explode into expression and the universe of law, the executor of all feeling and emotion, that law that takes whatever the desire is and has the intelligence and the um, wherewithal to make that so. Let us remember that back of each one of us, which we see, is a divine image. There is a perfect concept of the human being held in the mind of the universe as an already accomplished fact. 
but we are subject to the law of our own choices. And so if there is a divine pattern of wholeness and we continue to choose to not support that divine pattern of wholeness, on the one hand in our consciousness with fear or doubt or, oh my God, you know, everybody's getting sick around me and I'm terrified, or we don't take care of the divine image as it outpictures and we don't take care of our food and our exercise and our sleep and all the ways in which um, we reduce the stress on our body, we are subject to the law of these choices. And it's not that the universe has a different idea about it or that the universe is teaching us a lesson. We are simply learning lessons from the consequences of our choices. And again, I want to really underscore, you're allowed to choose. Not only are you allowed to choose, that's, that's the nature of being a self-aware being, is the experience of choosing and discovering which choices are in alignment with how that divine image is moving and the impulse of life as us. And as I said, there's no, there's very little form in that divine image. It's up to us to decide what that looks like and how that outpictures and how we take that up. Those are our choices. And the universe has no opinion about it. It just reflects back to us through the law that which we are choosing, whether we're choosing it consciously or unconsciously. So I want to stop there and talk about this. Are you someone who says, well, I'm going to see what the universe wants for me? What is it about the power of choosing that is maybe a little frightening or a too much responsibility? What keeps us from really deliberately exercising our power of choice and trusting the law to make that choice outpicture in some really, really good way? Do you feel like you're allowed to choose? Or do you think sometimes that choice is not available to you? So let's talk about this for a little bit. I know Ryan's chatting, putting some of these in the chat. Um, we'd love to hear from you. And so, um, Ryan, I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Petra. And good morning to everybody who's watching us out here on both Facebook Live and here in Zoom. If you guys want to comment or ask questions here in the Zoom room, there is a raise your hand icon located down at the bottom of your screen. You can always hit that or inside of the chat box you can put your questions in your comments there if you're on Facebook live you'll notice I put the link to the zoom room on here if you want to jump over or you can leave your questions and comments within the chats or comment fields of Facebook live so I'm gonna start that awkward silence roll all of a sudden now somebody's <laughs> finally brave enough to raise their hand uh, it's just a telephone number, so I'm going to go ahead and ask you to just uh, unmute yourself. And number 426. Tell us your name. Oh, I guess that's me. Uh, oh. Rena Delabega. Hi, Rena. It's so nice to hear, hear your me? voice. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the question was about uh, choosing. Mm -hmm. And lately, I've substituted that word with, with the word co-creating. Yes. And because I believe that everything is energy. And so now I'm having so much fun and excitement co-creating with the horse. Beautiful. So that's what I've been doing. That's awesome, Rena. And how does co-creating feel... You. How does, let me just ask you a follow-up question, Rena. How does co-creating feel different to you than choosing? Tell me the flavor difference. What's different? Uh, oh, uh, with co-creating, I feel very at one with yes. the force. I, I, it's like I forget that 
I'm human. Yes. <laughs> There's that human part of me. Yeah. Brilliant. That is beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And that is, that's great. And you know, um, we're in the conversation in um, this whole month about the four stages of development, of the develop, four levels of development of consciousness. And, and our power to choose, we really develop in the second stage of consciousness. When we say life is done by me, I, it's my choices and my attitude. Right, and then we we slide into the third uh, stage where we really go. Oh, wait! There's a law that I'm using. There's something much larger going on here. But what Rena has expressed is a prof is a beautiful statement of the fourth stage of consciousness. I forget I'm human, and I'm simply co-creating. My will and thy will, my uh, choices with the universal power, with the force, absolutely moving as one in the world. And, and, and the result is actually quite fun and relaxed and, uh, um, and a beautiful expression. So, so it, it's really great to play with the words a little bit and to feel the flavor of the words. Choice can be very freeing and empowering. But it also carries a lot of responsibility, which is, of course, the portal into the second level of consciousness, the portal of responsibility. But then we have to surrender our doing it to the universal law. And ultimately, co-creation is these two things in beautiful dance, harmonious dance, my will and the law and my desire and the law and the, and the divine presence and me allowing and the divine image and me allowing. And, right? and this beautiful dance, beautifully beautifully stated by Rena today. Thank you so much for sharing that. And it is, of course, one of the reasons why we move more and more to that idea of co-creation. All right, Ryan, I'm turning back to you. Yeah, so one of the questions that came across Facebook asks, you've been talking about through me consciousness. Doesn't this lend itself to be open to divine idea that may not be our individual choice? Oh, absolutely. And because sometimes our individual choice is not in alignment with the divine idea. There is no question about it. And so um, going back to what we said earlier, we cannot destroy the divine image, but we can deface it. And so this is a part of what, how, if anybody's teaching us a lesson, we are teaching ourselves lessons. So in the through me stage, we are beginning to allow that divine image to impress itself upon us. And we're, we're getting to see, are our choices in alignment with that divine image or not? Are our choices and the way in which we are engaging in the world really allowing that divine image to express itself as us as individuals or are we making choices that are basically either counter to it or unconscious of it or ignoring it and so and so the the um the learning for us right is that we get to choose and then in the and then through me stage that there is a divine uh, pattern that is seeking to express itself through me and can we choose that can we choose to align ourselves with that and make the concomitant choices and disciplines and decisions around it? Or are we going to keep making choices that are not healthy for us, not good for us, aren't actually in alignment with that divine image? So you are exactly right. And it is that disconnect that we're seeking to heal. It's always that disconnect that we're seeking to heal. It's a great question. Ryan. All right, I got a couple of people who want to come and talk in the room here. So the first person I'm going to call up is the wonderful and amazing Armando Cantu. Hey, Armando. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this is this this is uh, I wanted to share this experience about uh, choice this week. Um, I I contemplated with the choice because. I have been uh, pretty much in isolation for quite some time, and I uh, had an opportunity to step out and make a difference in being of service this week. And I had a choice: do I do I stay in my bubble 
and feel protected and not be exposed? Or do I make a choice and step out in faith and continue to make a difference? And I had to really look deep within and keep myself in check. And I had to, I, I had to understand that uh, how powerful I am within. Yes. I had to examine the choice as what would it look like if I choose to step out and what would and, and embrace it and see what that could look like and what that would feel like. Or I could make the choice to stay in my bubble and wonder what if, what if. Right. And so knowing how powerful that I am within and knowing my spiritual disciplines, I decided that I would step out and make the choice to be of service, to make a difference in our world. And it's a choice, mm, and right. I'm so grateful for the choice that I made. And I'm so grateful for this conversation because it is empowering. And for me, I think it's just staying focused on the possibilities of that choice that one makes. Beautiful. It's a game changer. It is, and beautiful. Thank you so much, Armando, for sharing that. And you, and and I think what's really beautiful about what you shared is that you didn't just cavalierly say, "Well, I'm just going, I'm just going to go do that," right? You deeply went into your spiritual truths and 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 said and asked yourself, "What's the spiritual truth here? Do I, am I this powerful? And know that I'm this powerful, and know that the universe is supporting me." And, and right, you didn't just go, "Oh." I'm just going to go do that, whatever. And that's, that is the deep spiritual work that allows us then to have the, the wherewithal to make the choice. I'm aligning myself with the divine, with the, with the divine pattern, the divine truth, and I'm going to move with that in the world. And thank you for so much for sharing that. You really expressed that beautifully. So, and I think it's really important to recognize that this is, this is um, why our ability to be self-aware and to critically think about our own thinking becomes so important so that we can make our choices from our deep spiritual truths as opposed to from a false idea or from a fear or from a little um, human perspective. Going back to Rena's conversation, I forget that I'm human because we are actually spiritual beings. And, and, we, and that's the, the next um, section, if we get to it, that we actually reenact the very nature of the universe itself because we are the universe being an individual. And, and we want to live in that place, not just believe it as an intellectual concept, although, of course, that's where we start. We keep working with it and working with it and working with it until we absolutely get that, that that's the truth of our being, and that's the space from which we move in the world. I, I really appreciate you sharing that, Armando. Thank you so much. All right, and you said we had somebody else, Ryan. Yeah, and I wanted to read this uh, okay. that came across the quote, or the chat box, excuse me, and then I'll call up Deborah here in just one second. Um, the person responded by saying, I have found that part of my... A part of my long-time work is to remain responsible to make choices. Yes. It is much easier to give that responsibility over to the other things and persons. Oh, man, it's so important. I'm so glad you said that. It's so important because we're actually choosing when we choose not to choose. And, and, I, and I watch this with spiritual people. They, they, they think that making a choice is, un, is limiting themselves. And so I'm not going to make any choices. I'm going to see what happens. Well, seeing what happens means that the universe, the law, only has whatever is already running in the background to keep creating that. And so our choice does nothing more than aim it at something. And, and if we want to get somewhere, we do actually have to aim it at something. Now, there are times in our life when we don't have to aim it at anything. We're enjoying a beautiful sunset. We've decided to take an unstructured vacation. We've decided to have a beautiful day off. We've decided to deeply meditate and just be open to the presence. Of course, these are all times when what we're choosing is to be open and to allow something to unfold. But there's nothing that says that there aren't times where we do actually 
Not only are we allowed to choose, but we must choose, or the old stuff just keeps playing out, playing out, playing out, playing out. And we are basically then running on our past thoughts, beliefs, attitudes, and emotions. And we're not giving any direction. Um, and again, the universe doesn't care whether you go to New York or Los Angeles. It just, you just can't go to both places at the same time. You, you, you could go to both if you decided which one you were going to go to first. You could say, I'm going to go to New York and then I'm going to go to Los Angeles. Or you could say, well, I think that today I'm going to go to New York because that's what I want to experience. All that the law says is, okay, I'm, I, I know how to make that happen. And so taking responsibility for our choices is critical. It's not a limitation at all. It is a focusing agent and it actually gives the universal law something to work toward for us. Powerful, powerful thought. Thank you so much. All right, Ryan. Yeah, so Deborah, do you want to go ahead and unmute yourself? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Deborah. Um, my, I want to share just a little bit about my path towards self awareness and this, and being able to choose. Years and years ago, I I knew that there was something different than just being a what what they call a reed blowing in the wind and and having no choice about what happened. Things come along and well, they just come along and you have mm -hmm. to deal with them. And, <clears throat> That started my path, and I went to different programs. I went through Al-Anon, and, and I knew then that there was a power that I could use to help me to restore myself to to uh, living um, uh, with awareness. But I didn't know how to do that. I, affirmations. I, I started mm -hmm. with affirmations, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know sometimes just starting with affirmations, you don't know what you're doing. But you, you, but you start. You'd say it, and you, you don't even know. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's uh -huh. a start, but things weren't hap Things were mm -hmm. happening. But when I started learning with CSL Dallas, that I do have a choice. Mm -hmm. I have a choice to decide where my life is going. Yes. It made all the difference in yeah. the world. Um, take for instance, yesterday I was talking with my sister, and and we were talking about how how we how this week things had come up that we had to handle. And one of my, one of my uh, things that I'm working on is I ruminate, mm. you know, Oh, I should have said that. I should have said that to them. If I'd have said, if I'd only said that to them and mm -hmm. you just stop now, you know, you talked a while ago about mm -hmm. knowing when you're in alignment, whoa boy, you know, right. <laughs> I'm not in alignment. I'm not in alignment when I'm doing that. No. I'm ruminating. I'm not thinking positive. So, so this CSL has taught me. Mm -hmm. I, all I have to do is make another choice. Yes. I can make a choice to do something different, and and you know what? Recognize it. Become self-aware in order to be able to recognize it. Beautiful. Just say, "Whoa, boy! This isn't. This is not in alignment with God. Good." Yes. And make a different choice. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh man. Thank you. Yay! You're welcome. Thank you, Deborah, for sharing that. And you know, and and it's so. It, you say something so important. Make a different choice. Do something different. And and I think it's really important to notice that Deborah, when, that when Deborah was sharing, she, it wasn't an outward doing that she did differently. It was an inward doing that she did differently. And we have this faulty notion that because we think it, that makes it true. Even more importantly, we have the faulty notion that because we feel it, because we have some emotion around something, we think that emotion is true. And the truth is both of those things are habitual responses unless we are conscious and making a choice. Wait a minute. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna waste all this energy. I should have done this. I should have done that. You know, the woulda, shoulda, coulda. We want to kick all those to the curb. We also want to kick the if only 
to the curb. If only I had done, if only that hadn't happened, if only, right? If only we are in the first stage, the first level of consciousness, we're in unconscious victimhood. If only, right? And so our responsibility is to choose. Wait, wait, that's not in alignment with spiritual truth. What's in alignment with tr spiritual truth is that I'm an individualized expression and I get to choose. And so I'm going to choose to turn this around in my own consciousness. I'm going to expect good. I'm going to decide that's what I want. I am going to make, and I, and, and I know sometimes it's really hard to believe, but the truth is you can do that with your emotions as well. This does not mean you deny your emotion. It does not mean you suppress your emotion. It means that you have a good, good, strong feeling of the emotion. You let it up and out like a wave. And then you ask, what has brought that emotion on? What thought or feel or belief has brought that emotion on? And is that in alignment with spiritual truth? Do I want this emotion, this which is usually a reaction, do I want it to be the guide of my thoughts, words, and actions? And if it's not in alignment, we get to choose differently. I may be sad, but this is the spiritual truth. I may be angry, but this is the spiritual truth. I may be afraid. I'm going to feel the fear, but this is the spiritual truth. And, um, and we begin to turn those things around because that's the power of our choice, in, when choice, intention, co-creation. As um, Rena talked about it, they're very deliberate acts. And they are the act of a conscious, aware, spiritual being that knows that it's not the victim of circumstances or conditions, but is actually able to be causal. So beautiful sharing. I'm really loving your guys' sharing today. It's really great. And your questions are deep and profound. So um, Ryan, I'm gonna turn again to you. Yeah, uh, Dennis, do you wanna go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question or comment? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, yeah, this is, this is an awesome conversation, but uh, I just wanted to add a couple of things about my experience in practicing this. I mean, I'll call it a formula because it really is of how to show up. Um, and you have stressed this. Okay, first thing I will do is, is this thought that I think is a good choice, is it truly in alignment with the attributes? Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I will go there if I need to. And over the last several years, I found it very very interesting when I just make a choice and step back and pay attention how many times choices that I make that are in alignment, the secular world goes, what on earth are you doing? Yes. That is not, mm -hmm. I'm serious. It's, yes. it's just, it's gotten to where it's fun to watch this reaction. Right. But another thing that I have experienced is when i the choice, making choices that are in alignment, even though they look out of whack with the outside world, they unfold with absolutely no chaos at all. Yes. It's done. Yes. I want to echo that. That is also my experience, Dennis, and I'm so glad you're having that experience. That is so awesome. And it's so critical to understand that, that this is why they're called holy fools, people who are following a deep spiritual path and, and worldly wisdom says you have to protect yourself. You have to figure it all out ahead of time. You have to manage it all. You better watch your back. You better do it, do it, right? That's all that worldly wisdom. And, and when we speak spiritual truth, no, in the middle of this pandemic, I'm safe. In the middle of this potential recession, I'm abundant. In the middle of this whatever, I'm, I'm this, the spiritual divine pattern that is, my, that is the truth of the universe is also me. A and the worldly wisdom is, are you out of your mind? Are you crazy? And yet, as you say, because we're in alignment with the divine pattern and we're allowing the law to support that, everything is moving in that tra trajectory, in that direction. And all we're doing is giving some, some shape and form and definition to it. I'd like my abundance to show up this way. I'd like my love to show up that way, right? We could choose lots of things, but, it's, but we get to actually say what? Um, what that looks like to us personally. That's our spontaneous individuality. 
Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm so glad that you're having that experience. And you know, you get to be inspiration for others. You, all of us can have that experience. And it takes work. It does actually take work. Uh, and Dennis, I love the way that you said that. The first thing I have to do is stop and ask myself, is this in alignment? Right? So, you know, you all have heard my, um, my uh, affirmation for 2020, technology is my friend. So I had a big old meltdown yesterday. Actually, I've had a meltdown around technology probably every day this past week. And, um, and I use my affirmation a lot. And so what I do is I give myself permission. I, I am allowed to have a two minute or a five minute wine. Right, that's that's it. Five minutes is plenty, but usually it's two minutes. And I like to have somebody who will listen to me without. I don't want you to fall in the hole. I just want to be able to express how frustrated I am, and then I have to ask myself exactly that question. So now, what is in alignment with spiritual truth? Now that I've had my little moment, what's in alignment with spiritual truth? Oh wait, that's right. The technology is also now picturing of the universe and the intelligence of the universe. And by God, the intelligence of the universe is right where I am. Spirit is right where I am. I absolutely can do this. I absolutely can know this. I absolutely can trust that it's going to work out. And sure enough, piece by piece, some people had to do it for me. Some of it I actually figured out on my own. I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and yesterday my little meltdown actually was a pretty big meltdown. I, maybe that was a five minute one. <laughs> that was a five minute one. And then is this in alignment with divine presence? No, the universe is never confused. Spirit is never overwhelmed. Absolutely knows. There's an infinite intelligence. It knows how to do all of this. And in that moment, in that moment, Right? I'm realigning and I'm realigning and I'm like, oh yeah, right, that's the spiritual truth. And then I begin to move in that direction. And as Dennis so beautifully said, things start lining up. And quite frankly, what happened for me yesterday, all of a sudden I had entirely different ideas about how this thing could move forward. It's like, well, what if it doesn't work out exactly that way, but we could do this and we could do that and we could do that and we could do that. And I hadn't even thought about any of those things because I was fixated on it, it has to be this way, it has to be this way. No, it doesn't. Oh my God. And all of a sudden there were this like popping of intuition and inspiration of things that, ways in which we could work, we could work with all of this because that's the intelligence of the universe. And of course it was all, you know, it was all around how do we serve the community through all this technology and live streaming and getting people in the building and how is all that going to work out? And I had decided that it was going to be this way. And now maybe it's going to be all of these other ways. It, and and, and it goes right back to, am I in alignment with the spiritual truth? Am I remembering in this moment? That's right. The universe actually knows how to do this. All I have to do is give it direction. And the direction isn't, this is the only way we can do it. The direction is, how do we serve our community? How do we, how do we engage with our people? How do we mix live streaming with people here? How, 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 that, because that's the outcome. That is the outcome. We're going to do that. We are going to do that, period, end of sentence. And all of a sudden, all of this inspiration came. Do you see? Brilliant. Thank you so much, Dennis. All right. I saw your hand, Ryan, so there must be somebody else who has something to share. Yeah, well, there's a lot that needs to be shared, but we only have so much time, which is the funny part about the science of mind, right? We <laughs> want, but we have conditions. So uh, one of the comments that came through, I'm going to go ahead and pose this challenge to the audience who's watching us today. Okay. And then for you, Dr. Peacher, I have a question. All right. So the challenge for everybody in the Zoom room or watching us on Facebook Live is to comment on the things that you have manifested by using this dedicated practice. Mm -hmm. So once again, I want you to comment on things you have manifested through your dedicated practice. I love and uh, the, the person who wrote this said that they thought it'd be interesting. And I think it will be interesting Lovely. too to see what people come up with. And we call them TSRW. This shit really works. So write TSRW and then whatever it was. 
Well, there goes <laughs> our spot on Disney. Anyways, <laughs> so here's the question for you, Dr. Petra. Um, it, it, it's, I, I guess this kind of summarizes what a lot of people are probably feeling right now. The user writes, my choice is stuck in financial fear. Mm -hmm. My job of 25 years robs me of my joy. Mm -hmm. I know the truth is my source, but I am stuck in fear. Yeah. I have been there. I have been there. And, um, and so what we notice is that this is not an issue about finances. This is a belief that you can be stuck. So where we're out of alignment in that moment with the universe is that there is, it's possible for the universe, for the infinite intelligence of the universe to be stuck. And that there's only one way for you to get your financial good. So, um, yeah, so, so, so we ask ourselves, is this spiritually true? Absolutely not. We live in an infinite universe. And if we live in an infinite universe, there are an infinite number of ways for things to happen. And so partly, the, so there's two things. I used to call it trapped. And it was, um, <clears throat> and so, so the first thing I had to do was to say to myself, the universe, the spirit cannot be trapped. The universe cannot be trapped. The universe cannot be stuck. It's, it's an infinite universe, infinitely unfolding with infinite intelligence. How could it possibly be stuck? And so I have to align myself with that divine pattern, that divine, that infinite truth. So, so that's the first piece of work, right, is to, is, is to begin to uncouple that false belief from spiritual truth. And then the second thing is that this job of 25 years is the only way I can get my financial good. Uh, I'm afraid that there's, uh, and, and I'm afraid that it's like, so give this up. I'm not going to, I'm not going to have my financial good, right? And so then our job is to ask ourselves, do we really think that there's only one way that the universe can express its good? Well, it's nonsense. It's an infinite universe. Just go spend the next two weeks in your meditation, one on the utter inability of the universe to be stuck and two on its infinite nature. So if it's an infinite universe, there are an infinite number of ways for things to unfold. And so I have to think of the end result, financial well-being in a way that, um, that creates joy. Financial well-being in a way that creates joy. There, there can't be just one answer to that. There can't. It's an infinite universe. There, there, and so I think of it as there, has to, there can't just be A, and there can't just be A or B, it's an infinite universe. So there must be A, B, C, D, E, all the way to Z and, and beyond. So, so, so what we have to do is start opening ourselves to the possibilities to start seeing other things, to start looking around, to stop, um, the, to take the blinders off. <clears throat> now, this doesn't mean you quit your job and you just wait for the universe to lay it on you because it does not yet know what to lay on you. Well, we're, where we start is with inspiration and intuition. And we, like I said yesterday, what happened to me is the minute I stopped saying it has to be this way, all these other ideas are popped. Now, I don't know actually which one of those will finally pan, pan out in its fullest, but I have at least five other starting places when I thought I had only one. And this is what, this is what you have to do, right, is to start opening up the possibility and, it, 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 and, then, and then we start using our tools. We start trying out different things and we start seeing what fits, what unfolds, where's the opening. But the end result is unwaveringly financial good and joy in my life, right? That's the end result. And that's what we stay utterly fixed on. That's what I am choosing, that outcome. Um, and, and so, yeah, so those are the two pieces of work that, that I would suggest really need to be done. And, <clears throat> and I think it'll be fun to hear from you in a few months, six months, a year, see how all of this has unfolded. We are never stuck. We are never trapped because we are the universe making itself manifest as individuals 
And all of that is available to us. And it's available to you. All right, so we're coming towards the end, Ryan. I want to see if there's anything else we want to um, talk about or if you want to share any of the TSRWs before we close. Yeah, I think I could throw a few TSRWs at you. Um, so I had some, uh, one of the people that are close to our community was just mentioning how their outdoor access program manifested with success. Um, they are able to uh, help people who are in need uh, of jobs, and so their program has been building <coughs> tremendously. I also had uh, another person out here on Facebook talking about how they got round-trip airline tickets, vacation, money, time off with pay. So much more has been happening to them. Yay! And they're, they're not too old of being a practitioner. They were just recently made a practitioner, so... Love it, love it. To see that that is working. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, uh, the person who you were responding to said, OMG, thank you. I have started the process. Yay, so I love that. It will be fun to see what happens in the ne next six months. So mm -hmm. stay tuned with us and make sure that you keep giving us updates. Yeah, I love that. All right, so we're going to carry on with um, how we reenact the nature of the divine. Um, and um, only our own concepts limit us. So we're going to carry on with this notion. And you can see how physical perfection, this whole chapter is so juicy for our whole lives. Um, so I hope that you're reading along. Otherwise, of course, I will be reading passages to you. So, um, yeah, and happy fall. We've, we've, uh, we've uh, moved into fall. I hope that you're experiencing that wherever you are. Uh, we're starting to have some cold fronts here in Dallas, and which are coming in, which is really lovely. Um, and have, we'll see you in the Sunday celebration um, in shortly. And we have all kinds of things going on. Please check the uh, website and be on our mailing list so we can keep you up to date. Have a blessed and beautiful day. Bye for now.